So this is my newest, latest Crochet Society box. It's their 48th box. It's running really late this time around. So I should have seen this box, oh my God, like three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, I should have seen this box. They sent me a notification that said it was on its way and it never came and it never came. And a few weeks after that notification, they sent me a new notification telling me it was on its way. So that one seemed to be the, the actual legitimate notification that actually told me my box was really and honestly on its way. Okay, so after all this waiting, it's finally here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna open it. And they have stopped sending their boxes in plastic bags. So now they send them in these cardboard boxes, which I like so much more than the regular plastic bags. So this is what we've got, this kind of rainbow box. And I haven't opened this yet. I don't know what's all in it. I have been trying to avoid any, any other YouTube channel that might be showing off the boxes that they've just gotten within the last week or so. And then also keep in mind, I'm here in the U.S. So we don't get our boxes until, oh, two to four weeks after people in the U.K. and Europe get their boxes. So, so we run a little later here in terms of when we actually get our box. So, excuse the noise this is going to make. And this is what I have. The inside of the box, of course, says a little sun, or sorry, a little ray of sunshine with the with their theme of a rainbow. Apparently, this month. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to try to be quiet. I know I hate all the crinkly too. And I'll probably keep reminding you that I hate all the crinkly. Well, it looks like we're one of our options this month is going to be a kind of an amigurumi because I can already tell because of the stuffing they sent us. Let's see, I try to get this all out. I'm not going to get it out in one piece. It's really crammed in there. And get that set aside. And then we've got the yarn. This is King Cole Big Value DK 50 gram. Now, I've never used this yarn. Uh, the couple of times I have used yarn from King Cole, I, I liked it. I was happy with it, so I wasn't upset or anything. Uh, this is a fuchsia colorway, and this is what they call their premium acrylic, 100%. And these skeins appear to be 50 grams apiece. For your 50 grams, we're going to get approximately 158 yards or 145 meters, if you like. Now, this particular yarn tells you that you need to hand wash this in a low temperature. Do not use an iron. Do not use bleach. You can certainly dry clean this and or you can dry it in a very low temperature dry cycle. So, okay. So, this is fuchsia. What color is this? This is my lime green. I'm not entirely surprised because neon colors have been trying to make a comeback this season. I've got my yellow. Go ahead and set those aside. Uh, this is the cream. And then we have a different King Cole. It's yarn. called their Baby Double Knit. Um, Cherish is the name of this collection. So it's obviously a variegated yarn and its colorway is strawberry. This is actually a really pretty yarn. I really like this. And what they did was they gave us 100 grams of this yarn. Oh, wait. And so this really isn't even just a variegated. This is one of those um, Fair Isle type yarns, right? The ones that are kind of self-pattering if you're knitting. Now, because this is a crochet project, the pattern for the yarn is going to come out differently. But that's cool. All right. Nice. So let me go ahead and set this aside. So again, um, we got the envelope. And usually in these envelopes, let me see if I can just cut this open, trying to not be too noisy. Usually in these envelopes, yeah, see, it's the Ami Groomy eyes. That's what we usually get in these little plastic envelopes. So 
I don't know what that project is going to be yet, of course, but see, so our stitch marker in the box this time around is what appears to be a yarn ball with a hook, and the colors are basically the color of the rainbow. That seems to be their theme for this box. Then we've gotten a pin, one of their badges, making magic happen which is kind of cool, I guess, because in my other channel, I'm known to say something along the lines where we make magic with every knot. So this is appropriate for me. And the little saying on the inside says, ignore the rain, look for the rainbow. All right, so that's all right. This is one of their polymer handled hooks. This one is a 3.5 millimeter hook. Again, these aren't my favorite. People like them. Um, okay. I mean, and, and they're polymer hooks for those of you who actually like this idea. So just because it doesn't do anything for me and it doesn't get me excited doesn't mean this isn't going to get somebody else excited because they really kind of like the idea. And so, yeah, I agree. I like the idea of having a handle or having a hook that matches the theme of the box. I just don't find it particularly well executed, but that's just me and my opinion. You may have a different opinion, and that is perfect. Next, we've got this balsa wood cutouts. What is this? I'm going to go ahead and open this. Let me see. Oh, okay flat pack yarn bowl. So that's what this is. So these are kind of cool. I've seen these, but not by Crochet Society, of course, but I've seen them put together by other people. And it's pretty cool. So each side of this box is going to offer a different function or tool for your crocheting needs, right? So this side of the box is clearly the yarn bowl side where I would put my yarn inside the box and I would pull the string or the yarn through this swirly cutout opening part. And then this side of the box, okay, are my various measuring tools. So I can size my hooks if I need to with these. And these, you're going to just place it with the shaft. So let's give this a try. So this is my E. It is a size 4 or a 3.5 millimeter. My tulip hooks are always made sl just slightly bigger than what I would normally consider other hooks. So just keep that in mind because different brands sometimes have different sizes. Okay, so this is clearly not going to accommodate every size hook because here is a my American size E. And it's a 3.5 millimeter, but I don't have a 3.5 millimeter slot. So it's clearly not going to fit in the 3.25 millimeter, but here it fits perfectly into my 3.75 millimeter, which may or may not, you know, back up my assertion that my tulip hooks are made slightly bigger than the average millimeter size they claim to be. Oh, this next size. Oh, this is handy. So they're going to give us UK and US conversions in terms of hook sizes. That's all right. That could be helpful, especially since we interchange our patterns a lot here, us in the US and over there, you guys in Europe or Australia. Perfect. Oh, and then we've got our different. Oh, and this is a nice little addition, a little yarn measures. So what you're going to do here is you're just going to pull your yarn through and which slot it comfortably fits in is going to be basically the weight of yarn you're working with. So that's that's actually kind of unique. That's nice. Uh, here it looks like we've been given a blocking board of sorts, or at least this can be used as a blocking board. I bet this is also the base of the yarn box. Oh, and then here we've got more conversions. So we actually have UK stitches converted over to US stitches. So that's handy too. That makes everything a little um, 
more convenient, if you will. So, all right, that's that's kind of cool. That's fun. I feel like they put some thought into this one. Okay, so let's see what our book tells us. Going to check out what projects I have to choose from this time around. So the first page is basically going to be talking about a woman by the name of Helen Smith of MCAT Cro Crochet. Uh, this delightful designer behind this month's box to find out more about her love for colorful crochet. Okay, so I'm guessing that she had a hand in at least some of the designs. Uh, I don't know if she's had a hand in all of the designs, but it seems like she certainly inspired this box. And then here on our table of content, we have a design for a rainbow plushie. And then a design for a pillow made with basically the same approach to the rainbow plushie design. They give us also a design or pattern for a cuddle and love, basically what we might call a lovey here in the U.S. And then there is a pattern, a bonus pattern for the Ashberry shawl. The plushie, they tell us, is a playful and soft plushie. Squish this little rainbow whenever you need to smile on a rainy day. We adore the little bobble stitches that add texture to this piece. And then for the pillow, they call it a spring rainbow cushion. Combine color and texture to create a joyful piece of decor that is guaranteed to brighten up any room. Also, another option you might consider if you get this box is the Cuddle and Love Comforter. Little ones can cozy up under this soft blanket or keep it safe with the rainbow plushie wristlet. Oh, I see. So basically, this little rainbow deal is just actually what they call a wristlet, like a little bracelet that you might put on their wrist. I was thinking it was kind of a traditional handhold of a, of a lovey, basically. Interesting. And then here is the Ashberry Shaw. This beginner-friendly shawl is the perfect final touch of any spring outfit. And so, of course, we aren't given the yarn to make this shawl with, but we are given the pattern. So the shawl here is designed by Catherine Narana. I think that's how I say her name. Anyways, let me know if I butchered it. And if I did, I apologize. And then I believe all the other patterns that I showed you and mentioned are made by this month's featured designer, Helen Smith. There's also other things that they show us in this book. So they give us the instructions on how to put together our box. They tell us a little bit about the yarn. And we're given the page that describes everything that's supposed to be in our box. And it looks like we pretty much got everything we were supposed to get. Just stick with me for a couple of more seconds and I will show you what I chose to make. If I made any changes, I will let you know. I will talk about the pattern itself, uh, how easy I thought it was to work up, uh, how I feel about the piece. Yeah, basically, I'll give you the rundown. So first off, I'd like to show you how this crochet utility box worked up. So you can see all the different sides and their various functions. And then, of course, the blocking board there on the bottom. So this is nice. Um, it's not super sturdy. Like I said, it's just kind of a, looks almost like a fossil wood plied together. I don't even think I could call it plywood. But I think if you decided that you liked it a lot and you wanted to, oh, let's say, varnish it, that would give it some additional strength and help it to handle more wear and tear if you're that kind of person. If you're generally pretty gentle on your things, this should be just fine and last you a good long time. So this is what I chose to make in terms of the available patterns. 
I did a couple of changes, and so we'll get into that here in just a moment. I also did the little, what did they call it, a rainbow wristlet. So as you can see here, they give you instructions to make this little band so that this can be worn by a small child. Um, yeah, that I don't really get. So what I did was I went and I turned this into the top handle part of a lovey. So let's discuss what worked for this kit, what didn't work for this kit, and see where it takes us from there. So now, as you can see, this is the lovey that I made. I made the little blanket. It's a larger blanket than a standard lovey. Usually loveys are about 12 inches by 12 inches. And I gave it kind of a kawaii style face with a little smile. And I used the Ami Groomy eyes that they gave us, the little safety eyes. But because of the size of this blanket and the dimensions of how it turned out, and the fact that I used the safety eyes that were provided in this kit to make a little kawaii style face, this little lovey is going to be more appropriate for a child over three. So your older toddler is who this would probably go for. If you wanted to give something like this to a younger toddler, I would suggest not using safety eyes so that you can avoid any choking hazards. So what I did was I used the strawberry colorway of the King Cole Cherished Yarn. And I really liked that yarn a lot on the blanket part of it. Now, while the pattern itself didn't call for it or mention it, I added a row on the border of each of the lime, yellow, and fuchsia colors just so that I can tie it in with the little rainbow face. With this yarn, or this pattern, and I checked, and my count was correct. So there's only a couple other reasons why this could have happened. And what I'm talking about is I ran out of the cherished strawberry colorway yarn right here. So you can see I needed to use some of the cream colored yarn from their value pack of the King Cole, the, the value yarn that was given to us for other projects. So the only reason I can think that this happened was one, maybe my tension was off because my count wasn't off, my count was good, or they simply just didn't give me quite enough yarn to complete the project for the pattern they provided. And so, yeah, you take that for what that is and how you will. That's just the reality of the situation. However, at least the, the yarn color didn't detract too much from it. However, you can tell the difference because the value yarn King Co. they gave us, and, and to be fair, this is truly a value yarn. It is no frills, no thrills. It is kind of rough. It's, it's just your typical low-end value yarn. And, and that's fine, but it's nothing to get excited about. And, you know, and it was okay to work with. But if I were to go out and purchase yarn for a project and I wasn't on a really tight budget, I wouldn't buy this yarn. And so, so far, this value yarn from King Cole is the first yarn that I've tried from them. And I've only tried a couple of them, but this is the first yarn I've gotten from them that I don't really care for. However, the cherished yarn, now this is really pretty. I liked it. I liked working with it. I can see how the pattern would work up the self-pattering design of this Fair Isle yarn. That was nice. It has a nice subtle little sheen to it. That's really nice. So that I really liked. I liked that a lot. It worked for me. The sheen's not so much that it jumps out at you if you're not really paying close attention. But I think I was able to blend everything together eh, pretty well. So I'm not, I'm not unhappy with this piece, and this piece will make a young child quite happy. I am pretty certain of it. Now, as far as the yarn is concerned, 
as you already know, I used up all 100 grams of the strawberry. And to be fair, I guess I can honestly say I really wasn't sure it was going to be enough anyways, because 100 grams, even though this is a large levy size cuddled blanket, I didn't think it was going to be quite enough to cover it anyways. And I suppose if it was because my tension was off, then then I would have cut it so close. There would have been just enough yarn. So there was really no wiggle room in terms of that yarn. Now this is, you know, their value yarn that, meh, like I said, I wasn't that impressed with. It was okay. It wasn't anything to, to get excited over. It's a big value yarn. And in fact, if I were shopping for yarn, again, I would not purchase this unless I really had no choice, unless my finances were super tight. And this is what I have left. So each one of these was 50 grams, if you remembered. So they certainly gave us plenty of the big value yarn. There was plenty of this yarn to make any of the little rainbow ami groomy that, that they had mentioned. Uh, if you were going to make the pillow, I believe that you would have had enough of this yarn to make the various rainbow squares for the front of your pillow. And then, of course, I don't know if I showed you or not, but in the pattern, then they would have you use that strawberry colorway of the cherished yarn from Kinko, the 100 grams, to actually make the back of your pillow. So that's kind of how they have that all worked together. So that's about it. That is your Crochet Society Box 48. And until next time, you have yourself a most wonderful week. Bye-bye now.